straight through hell with a smile. You could be the hero, you get the gold. Yes, you could be sitting in the Hall of Fame and the world would know your name. Good evening. This is Joy 99.7 FM and we totally apologize for the late start of the program. But we're here now and my guest is in the studio now and we can have a great conversation on personality profile here on your superstation. We're live on Facebook, okay? So you can actually get on Facebook and check out the video for this conversation. You can join in, you can share it, you can tell your friends and family to tune in and listen to this great man that I have in the studio this evening on Personality Profile. My name is Lexus Bale. This evening, I'm spending time with a man whose name is edged in the history books. Yeah. Now, his is in the category of a very select few who we call inventors. Yeah. So, telecommunications and the internet have been greatly influenced by fiber optics technologies, which have allowed those industries to mature with more robust products and services. Now, tonight, we're profiling the life and career of another prominent Ghanaian inventor, a pioneer in fiber optics, manufacturing, and communication systems. Now, although the history of fiber optics includes a a long list of engineers and inventors making contributions over decades. My guests' particular improvement to the process of making fiber optic cables dramatically improved the cost efficiency of producing those cables, clearing the way for a much greater degree of fiber optics technologies at the work in our, in our world here. He's a chemical engineer and an inventor. He contributed also to the development of nanotechnology. He has 14 patents and was inducted into the U.S. National Academy of Inventors in 2015. Now, in 2017, he served as editor-in-chief of the textbook Nanotechnology Commercialization. Dr. Thomas Mensah is my guest on Precisely Profile tonight. Doc, you're welcome. Alexis, thank you very much. <laughs> really good to see you again. I appreciate you <laughs> inviting me yes. for, for your program. I'm excited. You, you have one of the top programs in the country. Media, you are number one. Thank you so much. And that's why I wanted to make sure that, you know, after you do your profile and yeah. all that, we get into the main dramatic yeah. announcement. <laughs> you actually, well, just so you know, he has a very major announcement <laughs> tonight. And I just can't wait for us to reveal exactly what you have up your sleeves. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you're looking really good. You're looking regal. Thank you. I, I don't know how you picked out this outfit. Thank but you. Oh boy, this is really <laughs> cool. I mean, you can you can go and check out our live video right now and see how Dr. Mensah is looking. I like your Thank hat you. as well. Thank you. And your your watch. <laughs> wow, that's a very oh, lovely yeah. watch. Tell uh, me you about know, it. I tell people, it's one of the most expensive watches. Is it? It's, yeah. What brand is that? This one here. Yeah. Well, to give you an idea. Yeah. The cost of this watch is like a whole house. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. How much does I it cost? I don't wear it very much, but today I decided to wear it on your show. That's beautiful. Yeah. How much would it cost? Approximately how much? As I say, if you have a house, <laughs> it depends, can pay It depends it. on where the house is. Whether it's in East Legon or... Oh, I mean in, East Legon. In East Legon. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And that's a... Oh, dear. Well, it looks really expensive and classy as well. Thank you. One of the things I find very interesting about you is wherever you appear, you have... A, a tie that is either a Ghana flag or an African print. Yes. Why that? Well, when you do big things in America, America want to claim you. Mm. And so they call me Ghanaian American. And so in the mind of the children we are trying to influence, the mm -hmm. youth, mm -hmm. I don't want them to think you got to be a Ghanaian American to do big things. Mm. That's why I wear these ties. Wow. You know, it shows that I'm a Ghanaian. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and as the title of my book says, the right stuff comes in black too. 
-hmm. can do anything that a white person can do. Wow, beautiful. Uh, that's that's a great. I knew there was something more to it than just you know fashion. Yes. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad that you, you got to share this. But hey, let me say congratulations on the many things you have achieved as well as an inventor. Which of them are you proudest of? What did you say? Which of the things you have achieved or which of your inventions are you proudest of? Well, when you look at the 11 inventors and inventions from Africa, I'm number one. Mm. Number one. Because of fiber optics. Mm. I'm number one there, including Christian Barnard, mm. the doctor that did the first heart plant, heart transplant in South Africa. So that's a big deal yeah. to be number one on that. But yeah. I don't rest on my horse because I want to get a lot done. Mm. I am leading, working with Peter Amewu, the development of the high-speed rail, SGR, for Ghana. Mm. That's so important. I've been pushing this since I got here. It's very, very important. I cry Kumasi one hour. I cry Tamale four hours. Mm. You know. And so we can live in Kumasi and work in Accra. We can live in Tamale and work in Accra. That, and that will change Ghana. I want Ghana to be transformed. Absolutely. And I've brought investors. My financiers are here in Ghana now. Okay. And I'm prepared to spend. I see. You know, five billion on the train, on the fast mm -hmm. train, the SGR. I'm prepared to spend. Wow. Ten billion. You hear the flooding problems in Ghana? I'm spending ten billion to solve it once and for all. Hmm. We are bringing con eight foot concrete pipes, concrete pipes, and we are putting it in in the flood prone areas. So when it rains, it goes straight to the pipes. You can stand in the concrete pipes, and still there's room ahead of you. That's what is used in the U.S. Mm. That's what is used in Dubai. That's what's used in U.K. So there are no more flooding over there. Mm. And so I want to do that here. I'm going to get it done. I'm and, talking and, to and is this a private project you, you yes. plan on? A private yeah. project. To be done privately. Without without government uh, Well, the government, Asenso, of course, you present the He wants to solve it. Mm. So I'll spend $10 billion on that. Interesting. Anyway, we'll get to know more about all the plans that you have. <laughs> uh, and we'll also get to talk about your involvement in fiber optics and nanotechnology. Yes. Uh, but let's get to know a bit about you and where you hail from and your, uh, you know, your upbringing, a, a little bit of that you can share with That's us. That's an excellent question. I was born in Kumasi, CPC. Mm. You know, I went to... No, go, go ahead. Go Tell ahead. him to cut it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He will cut it off. Yeah. And so I went to Wesley College Practice School mm. near CPC, where the teachers used to train. Mm -hmm. And from there, I went to Adisco, Adisada College. Adisada College. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Adisada is where I, it all started. Yeah. You know. What, what, what were your parents into at the time? I understand your father was a, a cocoa merchant. Yes. He shipped my, cocoa to my France. My father was responsible for most of my achievement. Mm. Because when I was four years old, and I want all parents to do this, those days, you sit me on his lap and read newspapers to me. Okay. And so at the age of four, I was reading newspapers flawlessly. Wow. You know, like your job now. Mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> four years old. My next door neighbor from Togo, teaching French in Ghana, and so when I was eight, I was speaking French fluently. I see. Yes, listening to the radio in French. And so the French was, they were watching me all the way to a disco. Mm. Say, this is guy, everybody from Ghana goes to UK or US. Let's find a Ghanaian who's good in French also, and in sciences, and send him over to France with fellowship and scholarship. That's what they did for me. So the French, actually, when I went to KNUST, the day I was graduating, the French has given me a fellowship, full fellowship, one-way plane ticket to France. <laughs> so the doc, you go to France, don't do any side jobs, just stay on your, you stay on your studies. And that's what I did. 
Wait, w what made you merit that? Oh, the French, they are thorough. You know, I won the O levels and A levels French, national French competition in Ghana. Okay. After all that, they still send me to Accra again from Kumasi and say, hey, you got to take another test. And I came on top of that test. And that's what made me mer merit that fellowship. Wow. At that point, were you sure in your mind what you wanted to study? Oh, well, uh, chemical engineering has been my area. Mm. You know, Was that your dream job? Yes. Was that your dream field? Yeah, to do chemical engineering, you know. And in France, I went to some of the top schools in chemical engineering. Okay. The professors at Montpellier University, where I was trained, are from Toulouse, the top chemical engineering school. So the professors are from there. And I go to Toulouse every time. Toulouse is where they have the French airplane, Airbus. Mm. You know, so I get to learn all that. You know, Airbus. And they did the intention, oh, Doc will come to Ghana and make sure the Ghanaians are ordering Airbus, not mm -hmm. Boeing. Mm -hmm. You know. And so I learned everything. And I knew at that age, 24, 25, that a lot on my shoulders. I cannot dis disappoint my people in Ghana. So I was working very hard. Hmm. What kind of influence did your father have on you? Oh, very, very much. Even when I was in France, he came to France to visit me and say, Doc, I will love it when you come to Ghana. But at Chiampon and all those guys are in the coup d'etat, don't come to Ghana now. Go to the U.S. That was oh, the okay. best advice I ever had from my dad. I see. He didn't want you to come back to Ghana. No, 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 no. He said that because of the coup d'etat. I mean, these, mm. <laughs> these guys, you know, coming to Ghana will even help you. Yeah. Go there. I know if you come, I'll be happy. But go to the U.S. And why, that was the best advice because that started everything. Okay. I mean, you had a fellowship from the government of France. France, yeah. Why didn't he want you to stay in France? Well, UK, Europe, France, even England. Those places, it's not meritocracy. More aristocrat? Aristocratic. Okay. Who was your dad? Every form you fill in France, they ask you, hey, what did your father do? <laughs> you know, if your father was a professor, then they take it serious, you know. Mm -hmm. But in America, it's meritocracy. See, that's why you have Indians heading IBM now. You have people from outside heading some of the big technical companies. Mm. And so I was lucky, you know. When I went to U.S., I went to MIT, the top engineering school in the world. You know, I sit, sit on the board at MIT. Oh, okay. And so when I was there, that's when Corning Glassworks called MIT. Can you send some of your top brains to come and help us move the technology of fiber optics from the lab into industry and commercialization? That's how I ended up in Corning. Okay, so the, the, the technology of fiber optics had already been initiated. Yeah, in the laboratory. Some people were working on it. In the laboratory. They yeah. discovered what is called the lowest attenuation limit. Mm. Oh, two decibels per kilometer. But they cannot take it out of the lab. They were working on it for 15 years till mm. Dr. Mensa got there. And mm. within one year, I solved the problem. Wow. How did you solve it? Oh, by working very hard, day and night, like I do on the trains and things in Ghana. Day and night, I took videos of the applicator just to study the distribution of the liquid coating around the glass. Mm. You know, fiber optics is just a glass, thin glass, like a woman's hair. Mm. And it's protected by this thin coating. So I studied that day and I said, oh, wow, this is a problem. The distribution wasn't 100%. So I redesigned the applicator, mm. came up with one that allowed uniform distri distribution around, around the glass. Mm. So you don't have any leaks, you don't have anything. That's one of the most important contributions in the world. And when I did it, I did it 
I've, I have seven inventions in six years, all on the fiber optic glass coating. I see. Yes. To get, a, get one patent, it even takes you maybe two, ten years. I've got seven in six years. And all this was somewhere in the 80s. Yes. It started off in the 80s, the yes, early 80s. Yes, in the 80s. And by the 1990s, I was the top all over the world. So I'm actually wondering, um, of course, in the early 1980s, there about, not many people in the world were concerned about laser-based optical cables and whatnot. Yeah, because everything was copper. Right. At least not in Ghana. We didn't really know what fiber optics yes. were or what we would use it for. Uh, of course, America was way ahead. Oh, light <laughs> of, years. Of, of light years ahead of us when it comes to technology. But at the time, what did what was the mission? What were you and the team trying to achieve with this invention? Well, they say, doctor, it's all under your control. All the people report to you. You have a f the draw tower, very, very high, like three, four stories. So we make the glass using vapor deposition process, chemical vapor deposition. Mm. So when you put it in a glass furnace, it be that's where you melt the glass at 2,000 degrees centigrade, and you pull it at stuffy. I pretend I understand all that. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm totally lost. What, what I'm, I'm trying to find out is what was really the objective? I, do, you wanted to be able to, to pull send, it faster. To send data. I, I'm talking about the whole concept. Oh, the of objective fiber was yes. we knew. Yeah. We knew at that time that we can send laser pulses mm. along the glass quickly okay. and send photos. We knew. But getting the practical was very difficult before my inventions. Mm. Very difficult. And so my inventions made that a reality and practical. Oh, right. Yes. You were inducted into the U.S. National Academy of Inventors. Yes, you did your homework. <laughs> you have 14 patents. Yes. Are you able to list them? Tell us. All the 14? Uh, well, as many as you can. Well, there are some on, on uh, the glass process, mm -hmm. the fiber optics process, how to make it faster. Mm -hmm. Some, and a few called a laser guided missile. I'm okay. the only black person in the world with a patent for laser guidance that's used even in drones now for the U.S. military. You know, wow. So I have all those patents. I have some on nanotechnology too. Okay. Yeah. What are those supposed to do? Well. The fiber optic guided missile. You remember during Saddam's time, Saddam's tank would be here. But with my inventions, the fiber optic guided missile, a core guided vehicle, hmm. with those inventions, Saddam's tank moves, the laser guided missile will, will, will follow it and find it. It goes through trees or behind a big building, it will find it and hit it. I see. How do you feel when all these things are used? What's it say? How do you feel when all these things are used and deployed? And you know what I mean? Very happy. I'm very happy that I'm a Ghanaian too. That a Ghanaian person can make that happen. So I must say. Yeah. So mm -hmm. no. That's why I'm doing all these things. In those years. In the early 80s in the yeah. U.S., when uh, only a few of you were able to come up with this technology, what role did racism play in your life then? Oh, racism is very serious in America. Oprah Winfrey, everyone knows her. She says the right antidote to racism is excellence. So when you excel in the white person, oh, man, Obebini, he can do things that I even can't do. Then the respect is there. That's how I got away. I navigated mm -hmm. through racism. Because mm. racism is there. It's real. Mm -hmm. So they say, oh, why is Dr. Mensah always dressed in suit? Because when the police see you and you are well dressed, and then they, they say, hey, this is a big person. Okay. <laughs> if you're just joining us, this is. 
personality profile on Joy 99.7 FM in this evening. I'm hanging out with uh, Dr. Thomas Mensa, who is one of the inventors of fiber optics. And the video for this conversation is live on our Facebook page. You can actually uh, uh, go check out the video on our Facebook page. If you have any questions or any comments, you can uh, send us a WhatsApp on 055 one 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 nine nine seven one of our good friends says superb submission about racism yeah thank you so much for sending in a message okay so was there ever a plan to relocate to ghana not at all really yeah why not at all you're a 12 guy well known all over the world even my guys in Dubai say, Dr. Mensah, you invented fiber optic. We believe in you. We put money behind you. So you're not thinking of, you know, really, till Nanadu came to uh, my office in the United States. Nanadu. Mm. He said, Doc, you invented fiber optics. You're helping Facebook. You're helping Amazon. You're helping everybody. Can you come to Ghana and help us? Mm. Move the... the, the the, the, the country forward. He came personally, and I say that's one of his best decisions as president. Best decision, inviting me to Ghana mm -hmm. to come and help. Well, because you know the guy, he's like Bill Gates, he's like Mark Zuckerberg. Getting him to Ghana to come and help is a very important decision. Mm -hmm. I spent two hours with him in my office in the U.S. I'm on the 45th floor or the tallest building in the southeast, the skyscraper. So, mm -hmm. Nando Bajo. So, we, you know, yeah, Dr. Mensah is here. <laughs> oh, on the top floor, 45th floor. Two hours, became friends. We talked about all the problems in Ghana. Talk about even the trains. Mm -hmm. You know, at that time, I hadn't revealed the bullet train yet. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've come since 2017. And I'm putting all emphasis on this high-speed train, working with Peter Mewu to get it done right away. How has it been since you returned? Is it like you expected? Are there any frustrations in the system? Well, you come to Ghana, you know, the first minister was Joe Gatti. You know, you know, he spent four years, but we couldn't get the the uh, bullet train done. Why? Eh? Well, I came, I gave my advice how to do it. You know, he decided to go and get uh, coaches from South Africa and come and do Nsawam train. That was his priority. Who is driving? Who is going to Nsawam train? Well, when I came, I gave him the blueprint. Let's do bullet train. So uh, so we don't have it. Kenya has it. Kenya. I usually point this out. From Mombasa to Nairobi, during the holidays, Easter, Christmas, you cannot even get a seat. For three months, you can't get a seat on the bullet train in Kenya. It will be like that in Ghana. For three months, you, you'll be struggling to get a seat. Not on the coaches, even on first class. Hmm. So, were you able to revert to Nanado about the fact that your advice on getting the bullet train wasn't taken, especially by the first minister? Well, he, he, he actually discovered that himself. He said, oh, let's bring in a Mew. Let's bring a new person. And Peter is great. Peter Mew, he's working with me. He said, met me two or three times. So we are going to do this bullet train. He's coming to Ghana. SGR is coming to Ghana. Okay. Doc, you are 72. Yes. And uh, you mentioned how... Uh, Nanado came to your office in the yes. States. Yes. You're still working. Uh? You are still working. Yes. People say, oh, I should have been tired sitting on my yacht somewhere. Mm -hmm. But if my, my colleagues, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, ask me, Dr. Mensah, how is Ghana? What am I going to say? Ahuna ufri. Ghana ufri. Na Ghana to say. What am I going to say? But at least if I say we have the bullet train, the high speed train, say, oh, oh, like China, hey, then they respect us. Mm. 
That's why I still haven't rested. Mm. I, I would tell people I work day and night. Mm. You know, day and night. And God is revealing to me innovations, even better than I have before, particularly what we'll talk about. I pray till midnight mm. every day. You know, I was praying one day. I said, oh, God, help me, you know, uh, find something that we can do in Ghana that can bring the year of return back. You remember year of return? Yes. You know, we had, what, a billion, whatever. Mm. Now it stopped because of COVID. So God gave me a new idea, a new way of bringing the year of return back. Okay. We'll talk about it very shortly. Okay. What does it mean to be an inventor? An inventor see things that other people don't see. An inventor, we think in four dimensions. Everybody sees things in three dimensions. What, what, what I'm actually asking um, specifically yeah. is financially and economically for you. What does it mean to have 14 patents to your name? Does well, that's what allowed me to finance a Silicon of Valley of Ghana. I did it with all my finances. Mm. I haven't received a dime yet. Silicon Valley of Ghana. And luckily, we are going to train the youth in Ghana, 200 in Kumasi, 200 at Kofi Annan ICT Center. And this time, this is the youth start that the government is doing. Okay. Yeah. That aside, personally, personally, are you rich now? Oh, I can say I'm comfortable. Because I, you talk about your... your other, my, other than my, 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 my Swiss watch, I don't say much about <laughs> that. But at least I have enough <laughs> to yeah. finance. Y yeah, you have... You, you, you talk about your colleagues... My um, bag, if I'm bag. <laughs> you talk about your colleagues... Yes. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, yes. Bill Gates. Yes. You know, and, and they are, you know, billionaires. billionaires yes. Multi-billionaires. Where do you rank? No, I don't talk about stuff like that. <laughs> I don't talk about stuff. Like Why? That. Eh? Why? I'm just curious. It's, it's not important. So I'm just I'm just asking because I'm thinking that if you have 14 patents to your name, yes. that should be worth mm. something economically, oh, exactly. financially. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but not at the same level as those those white boys. Okay. You know. Why? Why is it so? Oh, because they were they were serious enough, Fabra. Well, cartridge now. Okay, well, fabra, 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 apologies fabra. for that. So, uh, <laughs> Dr. Mercer just requested for his bag, so they're just getting it to him. <laughs> are, are you pulling something out from there, Doc? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> whilst he does that, you can actually uh, share our video There's on Facebook. And uh, you can also send your comments to us on 055 one 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 nine nine seven. Dr. Thomas Mensa is my guest here on Personality Profile on Joy ninety nine point seven FM. Maybe I'll get I'll get a book to to look for that for you. Is that it? Is that the book you're looking for, Doc? Is that what you were looking for? Ah uh, yes, for you so. Okay, Doc. So. I think earlier you mentioned that you had a very big announcement. Yes. Something exciting that you're working on. Yes. Tell us about it. Doc, we're, we're waiting. Oh, yeah. By the way, <laughs> the big announcement that we wanted to do the breaking news <laughs> yeah. on Joy FM of all the studios. You are the first to get this. I am doing what is called World Boxing Tournament in Ghana. A World Boxing, boxing tournament. tournament. You remember? The Muhammad Ali Joe Fraser fight. In the DRC. In the DRC. About 50 I'm doing years one ago. in Ghana. Wow. Big deal. Huge deal. I've been working on it for one year. That's one whole year. 
quietly. Normally, I don't, in, I don't reveal my inventions and new things. You know, I'm like Steve Jobs. <laughs> I keep it quiet till it's ready. Yeah. One whole year. So we are going to do the World Boxing Tournament in Ghana, where I'm bringing 10 boxers, black American boxers, mm. from the United States, mm -hmm. including Mike Tyson, mm. a big draw, and the boxer that had 50 TKOs, you know, without a loss, I'm bringing all these guys to come and fight in Ghana with eight boxers from Ghana and Africa, including one from South Africa. Muhammad Ali's daughter is coming. Everybody's coming. Wow. Oh, this is a huge deal. Absolutely, it is. Huge deal. What, what made you decide to organize a boxing tournament and, and bring them together? No, I just asked God, what can I do that can change the lack of visitors coming because of COVID? And he said, hey, doc, you should do this. Mm. You know, when God, God reveals me to, be to something, I move on it quickly. And so I have 100 people working for me in, on three continents on this project, quietly. Wow. Oh, it's not ready. Mm. And so we, my financiers mm. are going to renovate the stadiums, mm. the one in Kumasi and the one here. I see. We'll do two boxing tra tra nights in Kumasi because Otunfo is my friend. Mm. You know, I got to do something there. Yeah. And we are doing the main event, event in Accra, three nights. We will have entertainers, Beyonce, Jay-Z, you know, halftime. Oh, big, big, big deal. I see. Yes. And my financiers. We are going to renovate and put skyboxes. I used to own one. Skybox. At the after blank stadium, Mercedes Stadium in Atlanta. Wow. Yes, only the rich could afford that. <laughs> we are going to have those skyboxes. Because my billionaire partners are coming. From Dubai, they were flying their jets. And when you come in here, you know, tourism will be very great. All the hotels will be full. Mm. Stay at Kempinski, they come in in the skybox. <laughs> what timelines are you looking at? For oh, this? right now, I'm looking at end of 2022 or later January 2023. Okay, so yes. there's, there's not a confirmed date yes, for that. Yes, yes, those are confirmed, They're particularly not... the January one. Okay, so it's likely to be in January 2023. What did you say? It's likely to be in January 2023, yes, yes, you yes. say? Yes. I see. Yes. It's interesting you, you, you keep mentioning uh, your financiers. Yes, because they are the one. Mm. I'm, going to, I'm spending big money in Ghana. Okay. Big, big money. Ten billion on the flooding problem, five billion on the trains, and they're going to spend whatever it takes to rebuild the stadium, the two stadiums, put the skyboxes there, oh, mm. on the top. Wow. Oh, I used to watch Super Bowl <laughs> from my own skybox so in wherever. Atlanta, Georgia. The only African <laughs> with a skybox on the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in, in in Atlanta. Invite my top people. Watch the Super Bowl there. It's coming to Ghana. Coming to Ghana, for real. No, I mean, these are big stuff. Huge and deal. Yeah, yeah. Huge deal. I know Nanado likes boxing, you know. And I have one of his people, the sports minister, on the board of advisors. Okay. Yeah. You don't have the pictures of the that I sent you? No, not yet. They didn't put it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, but this is, this is a big deal, and, and we can't wait to see it happen. Oh, big, and, big. And uh, see all the amazing boxers from the States coming through. They are coming through. And, uh, yeah. And big names are coming. I'm even inviting Michael Jordan. Oh, wow. To come to Ghana for that. I see. You see, all the guys you see, it's called Legends Award. This is a big deal. Mm. All the guys you see on television. Messi. Football. Right? Mm -hmm. And and uh, Leonardo. Ronaldo. Ronaldo. 
Yeah. Yeah. They're all coming to Ghana. <laughs> you just see them on TV. Now you see, going to see them walking on stage with me getting the award. Big deal. So this Legends Award and World Boxing Tournament is a huge deal. I have a group that I've been working on in bringing QVC to Ghana. That group is helping me arrange the international rights on television. Oh, CNN, CBS, NBC. You see, the Olympic Games, I was in, 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 in America. Okay? NBC cover it. And I'll be working with Ursula Ekfo to make sure that our stadiums have all the fiber optics and communication gear. Just like during the Olympic Games where we put all the fiber optics for NBC to do the Olympic broadcasting. This is big. I can't wait for it to happen. I'm grateful that you came by, Doc. Uh, <laughs> I just, well, one other thing that I was curious about was whether you, you're married. Uh, I, I've been divorced for about eight years. Okay. Yeah. Black American woman. Okay. But luckily I have two young girls. Mm. I can't say young. One is 29. Mm -hmm. And the other is 32. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Kim and Helen. So, and I've asked them to come to Ghana. Kim is coming. Okay. So I told Kim, you want to come to Ghana? Study the Adwa dance. <laughs> so she looks at Google <laughs> and he's practicing. Oh, they don't want to come here and a seven-year-old dance Adwa better than her. <laughs> yeah. So they all come. <laughs> nice. Nice. Why did you divorce, though? Well, he felt I was... My work was taking me all over the world, and she didn't want to travel, mm. you know? So there was a big challenge there, Okay. you know? And, uh, but my work is more important to me. I see. I got to see if I got to push Ghana. Mm. More than Ghana, we are developing Ghana. Okay. If you had any advice for young people who are listening to you, what would it be? Yeah, uh, the young people enroll in the Silicon Valley of Ghana enrolled there. I created it. And since I created it, Silicon Valley of Ghana, because I did that, Amazon is putting its headquarters in Ghana. Twitter is putting their headquarters, regional headquarters in Ghana. Google AI is bringing it to Ghana. You know, So that has achieved something. I paid for all that. And they are coming to Ghana. Twitter comes to Ghana. They will employ Ghanaians. You know, Amazon. So go to Silicon Valley and enroll. You know, enroll. You want to learn drones. You want to learn anything, go there and enroll. And you will be surprised. Within six months, you get a certificate. You get a job right away. We are teaching you how to join fiber optics together. You know, because they are all being cut. Whether it's MTN or whoever, mm -hmm. Vodafone, they are all being cut. Okay. And so MTN will hire you right away and give Good you a stuff. job. Thank you, Doc. Yeah. I mean, you have a lot of plans, and I really hope that all these will come to fruition. Oh, it's going to happen. It has to happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. Thank you so much, Doc. Most welcome. Dr. Thomas Mentor. Yes. One of the inventors of fiber optics here on Personality Profile on Joy 99.7 FM. I'm Lexus Bill. I hope you have uh, had a good time. I have uh, had a good time, too, with Dr. Mentor. And I will be in the skybox at the boxing Excellent. Event. <laughs> you are joy. You sit down there with your binoculars. <laughs> Have a great evening, guys. Uncle Ken will be on your radio very shortly. Yeah. <laughs>